Hello, everyone. Hi, Professor. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, we are doing review today. Okay. So I first, uh, basically, I want to take this opportunity um, to put things together. So we have learned all this stuff. Um, so I have prepared something. So uh, maybe next week, we will have more time for just you guys ask questions. Uh, today, I'm going to try to put things together, the different concepts and so on. And hopefully it will help you a little bit. So I start out with, <coughs> I start out with a little bit of review on chapter seven stuff. Okay, because uh, I want to put things together on the Laplace transform stuff and see whether it will help you because it's the computation is so tedious. Okay, so I'm going to remind you with these pictures here. Uh, and you, there are four, four pictures, basically, there are four pictures. The first one is to talk about the derivative of this guy. Okay, so do you ever, does anybody remember what happened to this other side? It's multiplication by T. Okay. This is multiplication by T. It's very similar to the next one. So maybe this is the first one, the second one. The second one is this guy. And here is the French AD side. Okay. When you take the derivative, this one we use a lot. Similar to this, you see this guy here, multiply by T, you have derivative. And here you have derivative you multiply by S. But here, the initial condition come in. Okay. So this one we use a lot. This one we didn't use that much, but we can actually, this is also useful in deriving additional transform from some known one. Uh, we also have this guy, the third one. This particular one, you are shifting, you are shifting over in the S domain. Over here, it's multiplied by an exponential. The fourth one, so these are called the translation theorem. Okay. The fourth one is this. You probably can see the similarity. The first two you can see kind of similar, except it's like kind of flip. This one is also the flip of the third one. So over here will be e to the power minus as fs. And here you will shift the f, except after you shift it, the function is not defined. So you have to do this adjustment. So those are the four pictures, okay? So those four pictures are actually <coughs> quite useful. You start out with this guy. What is the transform of one? Laplace transform of one. One over s. One over s. <coughs> from this, from this guy, using, using these pictures, you can basically derive all the identities, all the all the um, all the most of the most of the Laplace transform and inverse transform that we use in this class. Uh, so, for example, if I go from here to e to the at, then this guy will go to one minus. Which one did, do you think I use? Which one of these three pictures did I use? 
three. Number three. You use number three. Okay. Uh, and then from here, I can multiply by t to the n. Multiply by t to the n is taking the derivative on the other side is taking the derivative n times. So this guy turned out to be this. So here we are using number one. <laughs> okay. And you also start out with one and one over s. Yeah, I multiply this by e to the power of minus as. So over here, now e to the power of minus as over here will be the function shifted, but the function one shifted is still the function one. So just u t minus a. And this one, what did we use? We use number four. Okay. So we derive a lot of the formulas for Laplace transform. Uh, I'm gonna do one more of this. This one do you think we use over here? This step. Yeah, actually taking the derivative over this side, because as I told you, the unit function, you take the derivative to become the delta function. So we are taking the derivative on this side. So this guy become multiplied by, this guy multiplied by S, multiply this by S and S cancel. But you subtract F zero, F zero, this guy as zero is going to be zero. Can you see that this one I'm using number, I believe number two. Okay, so I use all four of them. One, two, three. Is it okay? So you can get a lot of this that we formulas that we need by these diagrams. <laughs> so let's look at this one here. Let's look at this one here. When a is equal to zero. Then you have delta t will pair up with delta t will pair up, pair up with when a is equal to zero, this is one. Okay, so the Laplace transform of the unit impulse function is equal to one. Okay, so those are the four diagrams. How about so this basically did get all the formulas except for the sine and cosine. The sine and cosine, I did that for you once. The sine and cosine actually come from here. Okay, the sine and cosine come from here. So if I do e to the power i kt, this one will become on the other side, one over s minus i. Okay. But this guy here is cosine kt plus i sine kt. The other side, I have to separate into real and imaginary part. <coughs> but the bottom, <coughs> the bottom has a imaginary number. So I am going to try to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. Oh, I run those things. Okay. One over S minus IKT times S plus IKT. Ah, uh, there's no T here. So. Uh, there's, there's no T here. S minus A. And this one is my A. This one is, that one is my A. Okay, so I have this <coughs> S plus IK, <coughs> S squared plus K squared. Okay, 
So from this, you compare the real part and imaginary part, then you will end up with cosine kt will be s over s squared plus k squared sine kt will be k over s squared plus k squared. Okay, so this is somewhat overview of all these tables that we have for the process transform. Any questions? I'm going to next talk a little bit about <coughs> some, a little bit more conceptual stuff. Okay, it's still chapter seven. Okay. We're going to solve this general problem using Laplace transform. It will give us more insight. <coughs> it will give us more insight of what's going on. <coughs> so when we do this, when we do this, uh, we do this type of stuff many times. So this guy will become, and this one will be S Y S minus minus a and this side become my double prime this will be s y s minus a multiplied by s and then minus b we did this a lot so the equation now become this uh, the equation now become y double prime, which is s square y s minus s a minus b plus a times s y s minus a. Oh, I forgot the B here. There's a B here. B one. Okay. Plus B times Y S is equal to is the transform. Do you guys follow? I hope I didn't make any mistake. If you see me making a mistake, just just tell me. So we are not grouping the terms. No. Uh, plus, uh, what is the, what is the, uh, okay, so the other term is, what's the other term? Just want to make sure I didn't make any mistake. Yes. Minus SA, minus B. Minus S A minus B, and then minus capital A times small A. Okay. So uh, the reason I'm doing this is for several reasons. One is that this guy is really the same as the 
auxiliary equation if you try to solve it in the time domain. This will be m squared plus a m plus b, right? The second equal to zero and then solve it. So there's a relationship between this guy and this guy. Okay. Hopefully you understand what I'm trying to get at. So y s gonna be putting all this to the other side. Are we okay up to here? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so what I want to call out here is the following. This guy is due to initial condition. It's a uh, Come from come from initial condition. And this term, where does it come from? This guy is from the external input. Now it's called the external input because this way you have a system. You have a system. If one is a force driving it, if this one is a mass spring system, this will be the external driving force. Okay, driving the system in the terms of like system theory control theory. Um, I think it's in three orders. You guys understand? Hopefully, you understand what I'm coming. What I'm trying to say here. Yeah, <clears throat> now, what happened is, <clears throat> uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna get another one. Okay, this marker is there, close it. So if, uh, if FS is zero, FS is zero, that means there's no driving for external force, okay? No, no external force, no external force. No external input, okay? Then the answer, then the answer is gonna be just this term. That's this term. So that's why this term, this particular term here is called the zero input response. Okay. So when the <coughs> input is zero, when the input is zero, this will be the answer. Okay. Now, when the This, uh, this guy is equal to zero. That means this guy equal to zero. That means the system is initially at rest in the equilibrium position, also with velocity zero. So this is rest position. Okay. Rest position. So the state of the system is zero. Okay. So it's in the rest position and no velocity. So in this case, the answer is going to be so that's why this guy is going to be called zero state response. Or the rest rest solution. 
Now you can see that the actual solution is has two parts. Has two parts. One is the zero state, one is the zero state response, one is the zero input response. And you just add those two together and you get your solution. And that is because of linearity. Okay, that is because of linearity. So um, in a moment, I'm gonna talk, spend a lot of time talk about linearity uh, because that's important. And also right at the beginning of the semester, it was really difficult to explain linearity because we haven't done enough examples yet. We don't have enough intuition about it. Uh, I also want to take this opportunity to uh, introduce uh, the concept of a transfer function. Manual space. Okay, transfer function. Transfer function is just this guy. It's essentially this, this the one in the denominator. It's one over s squared plus as plus b. It's called the transfer function. Okay. Uh, we use usually it's called h of s. Okay. So your answer, your answer can be written like this. Okay. Can be written as uh, this first part as a plus b plus a a times h of s plus Fs. Okay. Uh, why is this transfer function uh, important? Because if you think when people think about things in the in the um, in the transform domain in the S domain, basically stuff you basically take the take the Laplace transform of the driving function, you multiply it by the transfer function. It will give you. It will give you the response for the external input. So basically, this one you just multiply by f of s will give you the zero state response. Okay, so this guy now becomes f of s times h of s. Okay. Uh, so what happened when the following is the case? Um, So if a equal to b equal to zero, now then, okay, this I, I basically talk about it there. So y s will be equal to, this one is zero now, will be f s, h s, okay. So we want to ask the following question. So this is, now this is called the, um, this is basically called the, I said earlier, this is the zero state response, okay? Uh, the rest. Now, what, what I'm gonna to try to say here is the following. See, see what happened if f of s equal to one, okay? Now, on top of this, on top of this, f of s is also equal to one. If f of s equal to one, then ys will be what? If f of s equal to one, ys will be h of h s. Of That's h of s. So h of s is important in the sense that you, now if f, y of s is equal to h of s, so your original solution, yt, will be the inverse transform of h of s. Okay. Now, see, what, what we are saying is the following here. What we are saying is that um, in, this, in this equation, in this equation, okay, if this guy is zero, if this guy is zero, and this guy is zero, okay, if both of them are zero, and if, uh, 
the this guy, okay, this guy is the fs equal to what if fs is equal to one okay if fs equal to one what is the inverse transform of one what is the inverse transform of one we just talked about it earlier what is the inverse transform of one one over n no if you have one here it will be oh, sorry. one over s here if you have one on the right hand side the other side will be the direct delta function. It will be the delta function, right? But so this guy is actually the delta function. Okay. Now, so this guy is the delta function. Okay. Can you so go over one more time why h of s equals one? Oh, this is just under the assumption. This is an if. Is, are you asking me why this is equal to one? No, why h of s equals one. No. As it, sorry, it, it, sorry, it wasn't, um, it didn't catch all that. If uh, f is equal to one, why s will be h s? Yeah, I'm asking why we're talking about why the inverse transform of one oh. is the delta function. Oh, why is that? Oh. Well, I mean, not why is that, but like, why are we specifically talking about it in relation to h of s? Uh, because I'm okay. Why am I suddenly talk about this? Yeah. Okay. Maybe maybe just wait. I'm gonna go into that. Let me see whether mm -hmm. I go another minute or two. Whether you under, whether I answer the question. So what this is saying is the following. Now when the input, <laughs> when the state is at rest, the state is at rest. Okay. And the input is the delta function. We just hit it with something. Okay, then the solution, the solution is the inverse transform. <coughs> okay, the solution is the inverse transform of this. So that is, I'm trying to explain the significance of this HS. <coughs> the inverse transform, <coughs> maybe I'll write this down in a sentence. <coughs> The inverse transform of the transfer function now the transfer function is one over this is a transfer function one over one over s squared as a s as b this is for i'm trying to explain the significance of the transfer function the inverse transform of the transfer function <coughs> is the response to the unit impulse okay so all this is trying to say this that means that is the significance of this transfer function. Okay. The inverse transform of the transfer of this transfer function. Now the transfer function is easy to write down. Once you have the differential equation, you can write down the transfer function. It's the response to the unit impulse function. Okay. Uh, the, and that has to do with something Called the convolution in the time domain that we actually skip over. Sorry about that. But essentially, what I'm trying to explain to you is that it's the significance of this transfer function. Okay. Uh, I think I'm, I don't know whether to answer your question, Shannon. Good, thank you. Okay. Okay. Any questions so far? This is a little bit heavy, so. But I think it's good to talk about it at least once uh, when, because we talk so much about, we do all this Laplace transform stuff. Otherwise, it's all just a bunch of computation. Okay. 
I'm going to uh, spend a lot the next maybe half an hour, 45 minutes on linearity. Okay. Now, uh, what we did earlier with this uh, fast transform writing out the solution like that, we basically say that the answer is separated into two parts. One is due to one is due to the initial condition, one is due to the external driving force. There are two parts. Okay. But this result, you can actually see this without going to a fast transform. It's just due to linearity, okay? So I'm going to uh, talk about this more in the time domain now. I'm going to do this from the time domain perspective, okay? So I'm going to consider this. Instead of A and B, this A and B were constants, okay? We assume those are constants because we haven't deal with too much about when these are not constant when we solving the Laplace transform. But we have deal with this in the time domain. We have this situation quite often. Uh, this is Px, y prime plus Qx, y is equal to. Uh, I'm going to use t. I'm going to use t instead. Okay. Instead of x, it doesn't matter too much, but because I was using t over here, I'm going to use t here. Earlier results suggest to us that things can be broken apart into two forms. I'm going to call this equation one. Okay. <coughs> this is equation two. Uh, equation two will be equation two will be uh, y zero. Equation two, I have this one equal to zero. I'm going to a equal to b. Equation three will be this guy. Uh, hopefully you understand the relationship between two, three, and one. It's similar to what we talk about here. Okay, in equation two, I zero out the input but keep the initial condition. In equation three, I keep the external input but change the initial condition to zero. Okay. We basically saying that the solution for this, the solution for this, and the solution for this are related. Actually, you, you add that this so solution for two, three, two and three add together the solution for one. And why is that the case? It's because of linearity. So I'm going to kind of formally prove it to you, but it's just a bunch of writing, a bunch of symbols. Okay. So uh, this is what I am going to do. Okay. I'm going to use this shorthand notation, okay? This shorthand notation. Uh, the shorthand notation is this. Let me erase this equation. This is the shorthand notation. L, D of Y. So equation one is this guy, L, D, Y, equal to F of D. Now what is L, D? L, D is Professor, yes. um, what you're, what's on the board is really pixelated right now. Oh, very pixelated? Okay. Uh, I'll just have to wait. Pretty bad question. I'll, I'll have to wait. Yeah, usually uh, it happens to this class a lot more often than other class. I mean, the early morning class. 
I think in the afternoon, the bandwidth is usually worse, I suppose. Uh, so this is, I, I'm going to write one more line and then I'll stop. Okay. As long as you say out what you're writing down, I think we could probably keep up for the most part. Really? Well, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. only so many symbols we use in this class. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is my LP. Okay. I put the T there. This is my LP. I'll wait a little bit and see whether it gets a little bit better. First one. Okay, we'll wait a little bit. We, we have tons of time, don't worry about it. We have two more lectures next time. I'm gonna go out and get back in, okay? I'm gonna go out and get back in. Okay. Right. Look better now. Better? Is this yeah, right okay? Now. A lot better. A lot better. Okay. Sometimes I guess things need to sync up. So equation one is actually LD. Now the, the reason I do this, the reason I do this is that then I don't have to keep writing the same same thing every single time. I hope you understand. This is the differential operators, right? You guys, are you guys okay with this notation? This notation? Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's okay. fine. So, y0 to the a, y5 to the b, equation two, ld1 is equal to zero. The good thing about this notation is that then you have a lot less writing. You can even generalize it to higher order differential equations. Okay, so now I have equation one, two, and three. Okay. So I can erase these first three. Now this solution here, uh, this, uh, the couple of solutions, okay. So this, this solution here, I am going to call this YH. H is basically say homogeneous. Basically you force this guy to homogeneous, but you keep the initial condition, okay? And this one here, I'm going to call this YP for a particular solution, because this one is not C. Okay, I am going to show you the solution for this. Solution for one, what do you think it is? This is what I say here, right? Similar to what happened here. The solution for this problem, which has both the external driving force and the initially is not at rest, it's going to be the solution for these two added together, which is what this say when we talk about using Laplace transform. But we don't have to go to Laplace transform to see that. We can just show that through linearity. Okay. So uh, what perhaps, I'm trying to. Is it YH as the second one and YP as the bottom one? Yeah, YH at the top and YP at the bottom. Can you remind me what YH means? H. Uh, H stands for homogeneous. Gotcha. So like the complementary solutions we were doing earlier? Uh, very close. Uh, I will have to explain it a little bit more later. The complementary solution YC, YC is C1Y1 plus C2Y2. It still have the parameters in it. Okay. You still have the parameter in it. 
usually the way that we did, the way we do things is the following, right? We find a complementary solution, okay? And then we say y is equal to yc plus yp. And that will be c1, y1 plus c2, y2 plus yp. And then you use initial condition to solve for c1 and c2. It's, you, you guys remember that? Yeah. You, you remember that. So what is YH? YH is actually, YH is the following. YH is, uh, YH is starting from here. Okay, use initial, you're starting from YC, use initial condition to solve for C1, C2, and then to obtain YH. So that's slightly different. I gotcha, kind of. Yeah, uh, I'll figure it out. It's slightly different, though, but I mean, you don't have to call it YH, you can call it, still call it YC if you want. But the our book, you call this guy YC and call this. YH. YH is basically, it's basically YC with the initial condition put into it. YH, okay. is, YH is YC with the C1, C2 determined already by initial condition. Okay. Take a, take a guess as what, right. solution, what this solution is. How is this related to the other two? It's just That's what. What do you think? It's just adding them together. It's just adding them together. That's what linearity is going to give you. Okay. I'm going to formally prove it to you in the time domain, even though we get the grains of it over here, when we do the, in the S domain. But here is a little bit more general. I don't need the constant coefficient, okay, to show that. I'm going to erase that. Now I'm showing this yh plus yp is a solution to one given, so let me just write down, mm -hmm. yh yeah, plus yp is solution to one given y h is solution to two and y p is solution to three. Is the uh, are you guys able to see the board now or has it deteriorated again? Not the same. The same not worse. Is not worse. Okay. Okay. I'm going to show it to you. Now it's much easier to show than before because we have this notation, LT notation. Okay, so LD. Now I, I need to show that this guy is the solution to one. That means it has to satisfy this and also this. Okay, so LDYH plus YP. What is it equal to? Will be LD. Because of linearity, this one will be this plus this. But what is this part? Y H, let's say when you plug in Y H, this would be zero, right? So you have zero plus, when you plug in Y P here, you're supposed to get F of T, then you do get F of T. It's okay. And that's the beauty of linearity. Mm 
Uh, we still have to check the second part. The second part we need to check is y h plus y p evaluate at zero. What is it? Will be y h at zero and y p at zero. But what is y h at zero? Y h at zero is a. Y p at zero is zero, so you get a. How about this prime stuff? So it will be i y h prime zero plus y p prime zero. Y h prime zero would be b. The other one is zero, so we get b. So I formally proved that this is this is solution to one. That's the power of linearity. And we use linearity all over the place in a lot of stuff. Sometimes it's just a little bit implicit. Any questions so far? I'm going to show you some other place where we use linearity, okay? Any question? I mean, it's a lot of symbol, but hopefully you have experienced enough experience with actual example by now. Okay, hopefully you can comprehend this a little bit better. Because at the beginning of the semester, I can't really do this. I, I, sometimes I try and students, students get lost. I'm gonna do some other situation. So in some other situation where we use linearity during the during this course. This one we do that a lot. Now here, here. I don't, I'm not even talking about a, <coughs> I don't have an initial condition, okay? There's no initial condition being talked about here. It's just that this guy equal to f of t, and I get one solution for this, one solution, okay? And then we say that the general solution, the general solution for one is, now this is a particular solution for one YP, some particular one. This is general solution for one, it's going to be the sum of these two, will be Y equal to YC, will be YC plus YP, okay? which is equal to C1, Y1, plus C2, Y2, plus Yp. Do you recognize that you use this a lot, a lot, a lot? Yes. Okay, all the time. Okay, why does this work? It's linearity. Okay, so I need to show that this guy, okay, for, it's a solution for one. Okay, so I'm gonna do this, put this into, into here, okay. And that will get me y l d y c plus l d y p. But l d y c is equal to zero, and so I end up with. Now this guy here, this has a solution of y p. Solution of y p means that l d y p. This means that l d y p is equal to f of t, right? That means because it's a solution, so this one is going to be f of t. And so this, that's why we, what we did before works. That's, that's how, why it works. We use the linearity, okay? The reason it works is because this thing is linear. So that's another place. 
a uh, couple other phases where we use linearity. Any questions so far? No. Okay, we keep going. What do you think the solution is? It's taking this particular solution and add to the other particular solution. Okay, because what does this mean? This means that L B Y P one is equal to F of T. This means L B Y P two is equal to G of T. Now, in order to show this is the actually is the solution. Okay, for this equation. All I need to do is to do LD YP1 plus YP2. And then this, because of linearity, it will split into two parts. And the two parts, the first part is FT, the second part is GT. Okay. Now we actually use this property without really knowing it in chapter four. Undetermined coefficient. Okay. Uh, so when f of let's say f of t is equal to e to the power five t. Okay. Uh, at that time, there was a table, you remember there was a table, you guess the form of the particular solution. You guys remember what I'm talking, do you know what I'm talking about? You guess a particular solution, the form of the particular solution. Form is a particular solution. Uh, do anybody remember exactly this? Is it coming back a little bit? Chapter four, there was a table. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if I have GT equal to GT equal to T squared, what will be the form? It will be A T squared plus B T plus C, right? Remember something like this? So if the right hand side, if the right hand side is e to the five t plus t squared, the input, then we guess the form to be just the sum of these two. Uh, I'm going to change this because the a overlap. It's okay. We are we're actually using linearity because if you have this term, then you have this form, you have this term, you have the other form. We were using linearity. So that's another place where we use linearity. Okay. Chapter six. Chapter six, we also use it, okay? In chapter six, we also use it. I'm gonna show you. Uh, 
We do this, uh, we use this technique many times in chapter six. Let's say this guy has solution. This y one guy has solution y two. Then this guy will have solution a y one plus b y two. Ah. Uh, do you guys remember we use something like this? When we solve this, when we solve this, sometimes we put a one, we put this, we call this C0 and C1, right? This is called C0, this is called C1. We put C0, you go to one and C1, you go to zero, and then we, and then you get a solution Y1, and then you swap this, you get a solution Y2, and then you say that, your general solution is C0, Y1 plus C1, Y2. I mean, this C0 and C0, this, this guy are my A and B. Okay. You guys remember we do something like this in chapter six? No? Kind of. Honestly, no. What is this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe I will have to. Uh, Redo an example in chapter six. Okay, let me try. Okay, uh, you don't remember this at all. Okay. Uh, what section would it have been in? Uh, chapter six, we only did 6.2. Uh, okay, I am going to do an example in chapter six. Okay. Oh, this is the like recurrence relation stuff with using power series. Yeah, the power series stuff. It's not coming back. Huh? Uh, okay. I will do one. I will do. So. Oh, professor. My, 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 kids, my kids are laughing at me because my students are very honest with me. So. That's <laughs> okay, my kids are laughing. <laughs> I didn't really like power series in calc two and I didn't like it here, so I decided not to learn it. No, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I want you to be honest with me. I do want you to be honest with me. Okay. So I am going to redo one problem very quickly in six point two. Okay. Uh, but these professor? problems are all, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone has asked, but when we submit the answer on the uh, web assign again for the final exam, does it tell us if it's like correct or not? Or no, no, it's not web assigned. The final, I told you, I changed it. It's going to be on campus. Oh, we just submitted it. Okay. Paper and picture. Yes, I'm actually. I need to do the following. Uh, I need to, uh, I need to actually open up something for you. Okay. For you to try to submit. Okay. Please take this trial submission seriously. I'm going to open it up probably the, um, sometime this weekend. Okay. It's just, I will just put some random stuff there. You don't actually have to work on the problem. Maybe I just put, I will just put, um, test number one there, okay? But I want you to at least scribble something, okay? And make sure that you can submit it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, please take this seriously because I don't want you to just panic at the end of the final, you cannot submit. Just make sure that you can do multiple pages 
it would be nice if it is in a PDF. But if you just take picture JPEG file, it's okay. But there are a lot of there are a lot of um, a lot of um, uh, apps out there where it will let you take a picture and then the app will change it to a PDF. Will get rid of the background stuff. Will line it up for you. One of them is called <coughs> Cam Scanner. I think it worked pretty well. Okay. So please take that seriously. I'll put something up this weekend and you guys really try to make sure that you can submit it. Because my other classes, people just really panic at the end because they haven't tried before and they just turn into a mess, right? So, okay. Um, professor, what time will, um, will the test just be posted at our class time? Uh, the test will be posted on in in campus as an assignment, the final exam. Uh, like what time will it be opened? Exactly the time that the syllabus say the final start. Uh, you will talk about okay, okay. you will talk about the actual exam, right? So we are starts at yeah. 11, Sorry, what? Eleven ten a.m. Okay, thank you. To one forty. Yeah, I, forgot, I don't even remember which date, but it will be post. I mean, it will be, I will post a PDF file, which will be similar to like what you receive in test number one. Okay, but except that at that time it's in person. Now it's going to be open book and open notes, but no collab collaboration. So I actually will make the, I probably told you this, I will make the test a little bit, the final exam a little bit harder and longer so that people don't have time to collaborate. Okay. I, I work on this in, I did the same thing in my linear algebra class and what, oh, okay. Okay. So if you don't do too well, don't panic, there will be a curve. Okay. Sorry. You, you, you. Yeah. So I-, I, you, I you broke up there for a second. You said it was gonna be longer, but what? Yeah, uh, longer and harder. A little bit longer and also more difficult. Because if I get some very standard question from the textbook, I actually try it. I just grab the question and put it in the Google search and something will pop up. We say this problem has been solved. Just pay some money and then you will get it, get the solution. So I have to take all my questions and then pass it through that particular screening to make sure that it's a little bit, my question is robust enough. I can't really do exactly what, just grab, take some problem from a standard textbook. So don't panic. It's not trying to, not trying to give students a really hard time. Okay. I'm trying to make sure that it's fair for everybody. So it will be a curve. I usually don't curve stuff but there will be a curve on this one. Okay, so <clears throat> let me, any other questions before I go back to the series stuff? Uh, is it, um, I, I, okay, before I go back to the series stuff, I mean, it depends mm -hmm. on how much time we have left. I mean, I, the series example is really long though, right? Professor? Professor? Yes. For the exam, can you give us just a little bit extra time just because of the fact that we got to upload the, the pictures or PDFs? Sometimes it takes a little while. We did it for another exam and it's just pretty tedious because you got to send the pictures to your email and then upload them to Canvas and sometimes it could, I don't know, take a little extra time. Uh, I, here is, here, here's what I will do, okay. And you said the exam will be a little extra harder. I think the time, it's something that we, we actually do need. Yeah, but I mean, the, the reason that it's a harder is to make, it's kind of try to make sure you run out of time. 
Right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, <laughs> All that people can not collaborate, but right. I will actually give the extra 10 minutes, but the official, official deal day, mm -hmm. okay, so it's going to be deal exactly two and a half hour after it start. Does did you say it start at 11.10? 11.10 to 1.40 p.m. To 1.40. So officially it's still at 1.40, but I will put in a little bit of grace period, 10 minutes. Okay. 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 Thank you. That's so it. if you submit it before 1.50, you should still be able to submit it. I got it. it. Mark you as late. Yeah. It's just when, when I use that app that you just wrote down on the board. Yeah, and with that app you can take about three pictures. It will convert them to a PDF with within three pictures. But if you have more, then you have to do separate files. So it it does take a little bit of time to be. Okay. I, I don't know. I, I'm just saying. Yeah. So I'm gonna give you ten minutes. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, that works. Yeah. So it will mark you as late, but I mean I won't deduct any point. But gotcha. don't don't use that ten minutes to like. Don't don't no, start the process at don't start the process at one fifty. No, no, I understand. Got gotcha. you. Okay, start the process at least at one forty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I, I had the same problem with another class that yeah. towards the end when I was trying to upload the pictures, it, it took a little bit more time than I thought it would. Okay. So I kind of ran out of time, but yeah. Thank you. No problem. No problem. So, uh, Kong, uh, the final still replaces our lowest test score, right? Yeah, it still replaces the lowest test score. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I won't be able to do this the example on the, uh, for, to, to illustrate this, the example for chapter six. I'll do it on, on, on Tuesday. Okay, we have tons of time. Okay. We have, we have two, more, two more sessions. Yeah. So anything else? Um, Professor. Is there uh, any kind of like in in web design? I know obviously there there's not going to be the exact problems that we're going to see, um. But is there any kind of like optional like you could turn it on kind of like a uh, final review like do these like fifty questions or so, of uh, like the whole stuff that we covered. Final review of what you mean? Give you sample questions. Yeah, yeah. Aside from the ones that you like something that what well, sign already has to so let me let me tell you this i mean the the 10 questions i the 10 questions i put into the final exam took me 10 hours mm. okay because it's not that easy to make up these questions so that they don't come uh, up in google i mean i can't really make up that many questions i mean because oh, okay. if i make up those questions then it is it basically i mean defeat the purpose of making up the new questions mm. Okay. Um, I also sent you a message saying that I have an exam right before yours. Um, is there something that we can work out via email later on? Yeah, yeah. You have an exam and you have extra time and things like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll work this out. Yeah, we will work this out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, but the problems are still the stuff that you have learned, okay? It's just like I used to do the following, as I mentioned. I used to give you a study guide. This is section 3.5, number 27 in the study guide. And number, I'll put the test at number for number 30, I'll put that. So it looks exactly the same, okay? I'm just saying that I cannot do that anymore because of the remote stuff, because of this. I cannot proctor the exam. And also now it's not just a, five by eight card or anything like that, right? It's, everything is open now. But don't panic, please, okay? I'm not trying to get, I'm not, I'm not trying to fail the, audit, the entire class or anything like that. Okay, if no questions, well, we're gonna end five minutes early on Next week, I'm going to do the, I'm going to do an example on the, um, on the chapter six stuff and show how it related to this thing that we just talked about. Okay. And then I have a little bit more stuff on the linearity that I want to talk about. And then I have an example of one differential equations. I'm going to solve it five different ways. Okay. One using integrating factor, using series, using, Set, uh, 
using a uh, variation of parameter, using all kinds of things that we learn. The same differential equation to show you the different techniques works on the same question. Okay, cool. Thank Sounds you. good. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. Okay, so I'll see you guys on Tuesday and I will post something for you to try to submit. Please take that seriously. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Have a great day, Thank Professor. Professor. Okay, you too. Bye. Bye.